Hey there, camels. Today I wanna to continue our series on locals, talking about function types today. So this is part of this series I'm making explaining the local mode in Jane Street's branch of, of the OCaml compiler. All the information is, is in the description below of how, to, of how to get it so you can play around with it. Um, uh, and, and this builds on a bunch of other videos that, that, that I've made, which you can, which you can find on our, uh, on our channel. Um, so let's, let's dive right in. So it turns out that uh, a, a function that is local is not everything that it appears to be. So let's, let's work through uh, an example as we like to do here. So the example is going to be a function that appends um, an int list onto another int list. So we'll have append ints, um, and then it'll take x's and y's and match x's. Starts out as a fairly basic function here. So if this is empty, we're just going to return y's. Otherwise, we find an element, and then we're going to cons that onto the result of calling append ints on the tail and y's. So I could make this more efficient by using tail recursion. Uh, that turns out not to matter in this video so much. Uh, did in the last one. Um, and so let's go with that. Oops. Um, and we try to build this. Oh, syntax error. Oh, well, yes, of course, that's not that's no good. Um, uh, yes, and this is a recursive definition, so we put in rec, and okay, so all is well, except that this is kind of boring because it doesn't have any locals anywhere. So let's assert that in fact it is going to be local. So we're going to say that this is a local int list to an int list to an int list, um, and then oh, and then here, okay. And how is that? So, so far, so good. So here now I do see that the, that the type is accepted like this, and this looks fine to me. Um, although one thing that's already uh, sort of interesting in here is that uh, it was I was careful to make this an int list that I'm appending. Um, so let's let's think about what in this function, the first list that comes in gets copied. The second one does not. So the fact that I'm returning an int list here, so I haven't said local, so that means that this must be a global list. Um, so the only way this works is that I'm taking these elements and I'm putting them in a global list. And so when I get this X out, this comes out local, and yet I can put it onto a global list uh, because X is an int. So we saw this in an earlier video that ints actually mode cross. They're always considered global. So that's what makes this safe. If I change this, to be polymorphic, then I'm gonna be in trouble. This value escapes its region, indeed, because it comes in and it's local, and I so I can't put it, I can't cons it onto something that's global. That would be bad. Um, but because it's an int, I am saved from that indignity, and, uh, and then everything works just fine. Okay, so far so good. So now let's take this and, um, Oh, it doesn't really matter what the result is here. I want to use list.map to append in oh some little list here, and then now I need a list of lists. And so I can write something like this, and let me try that. And this value escapes its region. This is a partial application. Adding one more argument will make the value non-local. Okay, what on earth is going on here? So the problem here is that when I do a partial application, well, this has to remember this list one, two, three. I'm creating a function object here that for all I know might persist for a long time. So list.map, we know, you and I know that list.map doesn't save its, its function anywhere, but the, the standard library list.map function doesn't have any local annotation on it, right? So we don't know without knowing the implementation of the function that it doesn't in fact take its closure and secretly hide it somewhere such that if it actually did capture local, maybe that would cause trouble, right? And so uh, because of that, this requires its argument to be global. But it looks like here I call append ints of list one, two, three, and that's, this takes an argument. And so the type of this, uh, sorry, the type of this expression here, right, that should be this type, which looks global. There's no word local anywhere near here. But not everything is as it seems. So what's going on is that this append ints, this partial application, well, because it takes in a local right here, um, that local, 
this this thing labeled local here, it, it, it sort of has to get saved. And that's because when I actually finish applying a pendants, that's when we can consume it. But until I've given a pendants its second argument, this information needs to be retained. If that information is, is allocated on the local stack, then I have a problem um, if this closure ends up on the heap, right? Then we have these dreaded pointers from heap to stack. We can't ever have that. Um, and so I said earlier, not everything is as it appears. What I really mean is that when I have a local argument to a function that takes more than one, there's actually a super secret hidden local right here. So I've just written the word local there. I have not actually changed a thing. So when I write a local argument, any partial application of that function is also local. And that's because it's going to store this argument in the closure. So this is all inferred for us. We don't have to write the word local here, um, but indeed it's there. Um, another way to see this is that sometimes in rare cases, we actually don't want that action to happen. Um, and so as much as I said that the original type without any locals or parentheses equals this one, and just to sort of show you, this is we get the exact same error down here. Um, uh, although let me also show how to, oh no, it's going to, does this actually work? I didn't try this ahead of time. Uh, if I A to expand, what happens? Um, then everything is okay. Um, so if I ADA expand here, I guess we detect that this has to be global. And so therefore it takes this list, allocates this on the heap, and then uses submoding to turn this into a local. Um, and so sometimes ADA expansion can help. Um, this type up here says though, that when I have a, a local argument, um, this is actually returning a local, which as I said before, is the same as not writing anything here at all. And different, then if you just put innocent looking parentheses here, right? So we all sort of learn in our second day of learning functional programming about currying and about how when you have nested arrows, this is really just the same thing as putting parentheses. Well, not so with locals. So if I try to compile this program, then we get um, this quite confusing error. This function or one of its parameters escape their region when it is partially applied. And that's because when I put these parentheses here, what that's really saying is, is that ah, uh, this is a this append ints as I've written it is going to be a one argument function that takes in a local and then allocates sort of a, a a heap allocated closure in the middle of it. That's not actually what I've written here, and so that's why I get an error. This error is correct, um, but it's 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 a little bit confusing that just adding these parentheses, it's 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 a, as if I've written a hidden global here, and I can't actually write that um, because there's no global keyword in this way in the language. Um, but but by putting the parentheses, I have, I have meant that. Um, again, the upshot of all of this is, I'm just repeating it a lot because it's quite confusing, is that when you have a local argument, there's this hidden local that appears here. Um, and that's why the original uh, uh, program wasn't accepted. Um, but when we expand it out, now it becomes fully applied again, and then, and then it's all okay. And, and indeed, earlier, when we didn't fully apply it, uh, we get a, a helpful error message because a lot of people got tripped up by this, so we added a better error message saying that this is a partial application, so we have to fully apply it in order to make things um, not local. Probably should just say global here. Um, anyway, this is just sort of a, a, a fun, a strange little corner around partial application. And, and one reason that we're wondering sometimes about maybe a new syntax for function definitions and arrows that don't, in, that don't um, allow partial application, just because there's a couple of these gotchas in this space. Anyway, I hope this has been interesting. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.